Welcome Transformer fans, my name is Composite Energy, and today I'll be bringing you my review of the Transformers Studio Series uh, Deluxe Class World War II Bumblebee and here he is in his alt mode. Now um, this alt mode is not the one that is seen in the movie. His alt mode, well I guess to explain first that uh, this World War II Bumblebee is based off of the version of Bumblebee that pops up during the Transformers The Last Night film during the World War II flashback. In the movie they have a flashback to sort of say that oh the Transformers have been on Earth for a while and they've actually been helping humans for a while now and they basically do a flashback showing that Bumblebee in particular was actually helping the Allied forces during World War II you know take down some uh, Nazis and whatnot. So yeah so this version of Bumblebee is based off of that one during that flashback in that movie. So yeah. So here he is in his alt mode, which, and to reiterate, it's not based on the one that is seen in the movie. In the movie, in the flashback, Bumblebee, his alt mode was a Mercedes-Benz of like the era. I think it was like a custom Mercedes-Benz or something. I, for life of me, can't remember what was the model or what it was, but it was a Mercedes-Benz. Now, instead of that... And I kind of prefer that they went into this. This is a very cool little vehicle that I didn't even know was real until I looked it up. This is based on a, what was it called? A Humber light reconnaissance vehicle or light reconnaissance car, which is basically a little armored car that has a turret and um, uh, not exactly this kind of a gun, but it had like two turrets on it, which is really cool. And who says you can't learn anything from Transformers? I found out today that this is an actual vehicle that did exist during World War II. Very cool. It's like, a, I think, a British military vehicle, if I remember correctly. But yeah, here it is. And it's actually a pretty nice representation. Obviously, it's not exact, but it's a pretty close representation of the actual uh, real-world vehicle. And I like it. It's really neat. I'm a sucker for, like, old-school vehicles, especially World War II ones. And I know how rare that is to see in Transformers that they turn into, like, older vehicles. So it's very refreshing seeing something like this. Especially on a very popular character like Bumblebee. So yeah, vehicle mode, very nice. The uh, main turret doesn't move. I mean, you can kind of go up and down, but that's if you force it. This uh, secondary weapon here can turn around. All 360 and, like, both ways if you really wanted to. So it has a mobile turret there, and he does roll very, very nicely on his big old wheels. And yes, this little part here is part of his um, robot mode feet, as you can see. It does stick out, and it is kind of noticeable. However, it doesn't interfere with the rolling, so it's not bad. You can, like, sort of shrug that off as some kind of weird bumper or something. So yeah, that's it for the uh, vehicle mode. So now let's get on with his accessories. Well, on to transformation, but that means I have to show off some of the accessories. First things first, you take off this thing, which becomes his, uh, like, uh, I how many barrels is Like eight barreled, like eight barreled Gatling pistol. This becomes that, so we'll put it off to the side. Put it off more to the side. We take that off, and then we lift this piece off to reveal the main gun. You rotate it. And you pull it out, and we get, well, flip it up, and here is Bumblebee's Warhammer, which was first seen in this movie during the World War II scene, which he then later gets later in the movie, either because he just didn't want to use it or remembered it or whatever reason it is, this is Bumblebee's Warhammer, so we'll put that off to the side. And as you can see, it does have a hinge. That's more for a transformation and to uh, store it in the car. So, put that off to the side. So now we have the car with no turrets, no nothing. So we rotate that back, and you know, rotate it like this, that's uh, step one. Next thing you do is you sort of, uh, nope. Well, you sort of finagle this a bit. Finagle this, and then lift this entire assembly up to reveal his arms. Now before we fix up the head, let's do the legs really quick. You just sort of pull them apart. And then for this part, you lift this up, fold, fold this up, then fold in the tire, fold this down, and then push it in at an angle, and then you close it, like so. You're basically feeding the tire through. So you have to do it a very specific way, if not, it won't work. So fold up, up, fold down tire, 
Fold this down at an angle, not all the way, then you push it in like so, and then you feed it through. And there we have his legs ready to go. Let me lift up a bit. So now let's get to his uh, arms. And for this part, you fold, fold out, fold out. Oh, one complaint I have with the transformation is that this entire part of putting the arms in and folding down is a bit finicky. I wish they would have had a better way of like locking this into place because they have the pegs, but the weird ports that they do it in, like you're so, like you can slide it in, but then the uh, barrel won't fit properly. It's a very it's a very wonky design. I wish they would have done it a different way. So let's get on with the transformation. Fold out, then you fold this thing out. Then you pull this apart, fold that all the way up. Then you bring the arms, and here's the trick, here's a bit of a trick to this. You have to fold this, like you need this at a particular angle for clearance, wide. Then rotate, then rotate, you gotta, like work with it. And then you have to, come on, for so annoying. There we go, then you rotate that all the way. It's usually a bit smoother than that, but that's what you do. Wait. Oh, my bad. There we go. You have to fold that out more. And then bring the arms. Come on. Like this. And then you fold. You have to like separate, fold in the tires. Fold out, fold and they have to collapse them inside like so there we go and then for this you fold these down and then if done correctly you can then fold down the entire assembly so fold down there's his back it's a bit of a backpack but there you go and for these arms you push up the chest to reveal his head Bumblebee's you know iconic head and you just fold down the arms Fold down, flip open each hand, and then you're supposed to peg this in like so, like there. However, the connection is not as strong as I I'd like it to be, but that's where they're supposed to go. But whenever you move it, as you can see, it just pops out. Again, that's like the second design, which I wish they would have done a little better. And there we go. Very a relatively simple transformation. So yeah, he is a bit of a shell former, so you know makes it a little easier so here we have world war ii bumblebee or as his call sign was uh, during the flashback uh, zb7 yay so yeah here's a zb7 or world war ii bumblebee and very nicely detailed as always studio series have really outdone themselves i will say that the vehicle mode is a bit on the bland side but it is a military vehicle from world war ii so i'm like yeah, they're not really supposed to be colorful, so I that's why so I let it slide. They still had some like little decals and whatnot. Now, however, his robot mode is where is where this mode is where this figure really shines. All the rivets, all the details, is very very nicely done. The head sculpt it's a very very accurate bumblebee. I think with so many toys that they've made by now, they're probably experts at making this head. So yeah, I think the eyes are a bit weird, painted a bit weird, but. I don't know. Might just be me. So yeah, as you need, saw, the head is on a ball joint. So for the rest of articulation, arms, arms, and if this doesn't pop out, ah, be careful here. There we go. If this, if the uh, arms don't pop out, goes in, out, forward, back. It is on a sort of weird ball joint with some restrictions. The elbow has a bend at the elbow and a bit as a swivel on the same joint. And a bit of a uh, wrist flap, but that's more due to transformation. He does indeed have a waist swivel. There is a ball joint at the leg, so he can go all around. There is a swivel at the th at like the upper thigh, and a bend at the knee, and that's it. And no, no, no. I'd say do the transformation. You can sort of push forward, but you're not really supposed to do that. Okay. Now comes his accessories, which are this. Little multi barreled hand cannon. Very nice. There we go. Very nice. And his war hammer. Who said the hammer was only for Ultra Magnus? 
Bumblebee didn't think so. So, there we go. There we have the hammer and pistol combo. And that's pretty much it. And yeah, this is sort of a way to display them that I found where if you just bend the hand, you can have them sort of resting it, which looks pretty cool. I like it. You can also store the hammer by plugging it back here and just turning it a bit. So you can. It even has the spot for putting this. So you can. So uh, that's his robot mode. And what do I think? I think it's great. I think this is, this is a bumblebee. Like out of all the bumblebees, this one is so unique that I think it's worth getting. Especially if you like, um, I guess, World War II vehicles. It's like very nice. Like I'm, a, I'm a fan of this. Whole, this is like a figure that was almost design, designed for me in mind. Because I like World War II vehicles. I honestly like older vehicles in general. And especially like Transformers that turn into these older vehicles. You just almost never see them. So it's very unique when one of them pop out. And for size comparison, here is Deluxe Ratchet with his coin. As you can see, Ratchet is still quite a bit taller. Bum Bumblebee is pretty much a standard Deluxe size at this point. Like, they, every, like all Transformers over time just shrunk. So yeah, so let's put uh, Ratchet aside. And I'll come with the other thing that all Studio Series comes, which is always super neat, in my opinion anyway, is the backdrop. Yay, like always, all Transformers Studio Series figures come with a backdrop representing the movie that not only what the character is from, but a particular scene of that movie that is, um, that, that the character is relevant. And here we have the flashback, the World War II flashback. This is the backdrop of that flashback during the uh, movie. See, this is the uh, Nazi-occupied building that Bumblebee and Hot Rod as well were, you know, uh, assaulting. Or, you know, did an assault on to, you know, get rid of the Nazis. So, yeah, there it is. And it's a very nice backdrop. Really cool. Like, I don't, I don't, I don't think this was a, sp a particular historical building or anything. Like, the only information I could really find was that it's just a, a Nazi-occupied building during World War II that, that a Bumblebee and Hot Rod were assigned on a mission to sort of, um, recover. So, yeah. That's it. Overall, I think it's a very solid figure. It's a very unique version of Bumblebee and just a, a unique figure in and of itself that I honestly recommend it. And the uh, transformation itself, what is it, the vehicle mode, I really like because it's a, it's a, I don't want to say obscure World War II vehicle, but it's a vehicle that I've never heard of until here, until, you know, looking it up now. And um, this is also a very good way of getting Bumblebee and his Warhammer, if you were a big fan of the war, of the whole Warhammer thing. And this unique pistol that I think uh, Hot Rod also had. If I recall, Hot Rod had a pistol, had like a multi-barrel pistol that looked just like that. So yeah, overall he's a great figure. Solid, like a, like a solid vehicle mode. Great robot mode. Uh, the two complaints I have were that this connection here is very wonky. And so is uh, one part of the transformation into the vehicle mode, which is like how they handle the arms. Could have been done a little better. Yeah, other than that, it's a solid figure, and I highly recommend it. So yeah, this has been my review of the Transformers Studio Series Deluxe Class World War II Bumblebee from The Last Night. This is Composite Energo, signing off. Peace out. Whoops.